The New York Stock Exchange, NYSE, is nicknamed the Big Board, which makes it sound like the perfect playground for a border collie to herd some stocks. Did you know that the NYSE used to be an open outcry auction system? That's right. Traders used to bark their orders across the trading floor. It sounds like a border collie's dream job. If you had bought just one share of Tesla stock back in 2010 for around $20, it would now be worth more than $1,000. The S&P 500 index is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. One day, you might be on top of the world, and the next day, you could be in the red. If you had invested $1,000 in Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway in 1965, it would be worth over $25 million today. That's a lot of cheeseburgers. Oh, the dead cat bounce. Sounds morbid, doesn't it? But don't worry, no cats or dogs were harmed in the making of this financial term. In stock market lingo, a dead cat bounce is a brief and small recovery in the price of a declining stock, kind of like when a ball takes a small hop after the big bounce. Even a cat or a stock in free fall will bounce a little, but that doesn't mean it's ready to climb trees or grow in value again. This is why us canines prefer fetching balls over cats. The only thing greedier than a Wall Street banker is a border collie who steals treats. A bear market is not just a place where bears go to buy their honey. It's also a time when stock prices fall and investors get scared. Apple's first digital camera, the Apple Quick Take, was released in 1994. It could only store eight photos, had a resolution of 640 x 480 pixels, and cost $749. How's that for a pricey paparazzi experience? Before settling on the name iPhone, Apple considered other names, including Telepod, Moby, and Tripod. Imagine a world where we'd be barking about the latest Telepod release. Google's parent company, Alphabet, was the second U.S. company to reach a $1 trillion market capitalization in January 2020, following Apple's lead. Now that's a lot of bones for a company that started in a garage. Alphabet has been consistently growing its revenue and earnings, making it one of the most reliable growth stocks in the tech sector. That's the kind of stability that helps border collies sleep well at night. Google's famous moonshot projects, like self-driving cars and smart contact lenses, may not generate significant revenue yet, but they showcase the company's commitment to innovation and forward thinking. Despite Google's tremendous success, the company's stock isn't immune to market downturns. During the 2008 financial crisis, Alphabet's share price fell by around 65%, proving that even the strongest stocks can face challenges. If Goldman Sachs were led by border collies, we'd start Kibble Sachs, an investment bank focused on the ever-growing pet industry. If border collies shared trading advice, we'd suggest diversify your play. Just as we love playing with different toys, make sure to have a variety of stocks in your portfolio. If AT&T were controlled by Border Collies, we'd offer Bark and T, a communication service connecting all the dogs in the neighborhood for the ultimate playdate coordination. If Caterpillar were managed by Border Collies, we'd build the Digger Dog, a heavy-duty machine for digging up bones, toys, and anything else we might have buried. If Procter & Gamble were run by Border Collies, we'd release Furbreeze, a fresh-smelling, pet-safe air freshener to keep our homes smelling clean and welcoming. In a bear market, even dogs like us have to tighten our collars and practice patience. If ExxonMobil were led by Border Collies, we'd develop EcoPaw, an eco-friendly fuel alternative that reduces our carbon paw print on the planet. If Microsoft were led by Border Collies, we'd introduce PawPoint, a software program to create stunning presentations about the benefits of belly rubs and fetch sessions. 
In the early days of the iPod, a secret game called Brick was hidden within the device's firmware. This Easter egg was developed by Apple's co-founder, Steve Wozniak. The original iPhone's codename was Purple Two Inches because the project was housed in a top-secret, locked-down building named Purple Dorm. The first Purple project was an early tablet prototype. The original iPhone's codename was Purple Two Inches because the project was housed in a top-secret, locked-down building named Purple Dorm. The first Purple project was an early tablet prototype. Apple's Siri has a sense of humor. If you ask Siri to divide zero by zero, she'll respond with a cheeky answer involving Cookie Monster and the fact that you have no friends. If the stock market were a dog park, bull markets would be like a wide open field to run and play in. If Border Collies taught stock market strategies, we'd say, don't chase your tail. Avoid getting caught up in the hype of popular stocks and focus on fundamentals. Bear markets are when we roll over and play dead. Be patient and wait for the market to rebound. In 2001, a group of chimpanzees outperformed professional fund managers in a stock picking contest. Their random selections yielded a return of 213%, while the pros only managed 150%. Bitcoin's volatile market is like trying to catch a frisbee in the wind. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. If border collies could invest in Bitcoin, we'd probably create our own cryptocurrency called BarkCoin. If Google were managed by border collies, we'd create BarkSearch, a search engine dedicated to finding the best dog parks and canine-friendly spots in your area. If dogs could trade on the S&P 500, we'd have a PAW 100 inches index for the top performing pet companies. If Amazon were run by border collies, we'd have Prime Fetch, a subscription service for the fastest delivery of treats and toys right to your doggy door. If Visa were managed by border collies, we'd create PASA, a dog-friendly payment method to buy treats and toys with just a swipe of our paw. If Walmart were run by Border Collies, we'd introduce Wagmart, a superstore dedicated to all things dog, from grooming services to premium pet food. If Johnson & Johnson were controlled by Border Collies, we'd launch Fur Aid, a line of dog-friendly first aid products for minor injuries and accidents. If Coca-Cola were run by Border Collies, we'd launch Fur Eshing, a hydrating, electrolyte-packed beverage for active dogs on the go. If McDonald's were led by Border Collies, we'd create the McPaw, a nutritious, delicious meal made just for dogs with all their favorite flavors. The military is always looking for ways to make its equipment more lightweight and durable. So if you invest in military companies, you might be helping to create the next generation of indestructible dog toys. Investing in military companies can be risky because their fortunes are often tied to government contracts that can be unpredictable. If Warren Buffett gave dogs financial advice, he'd probably tell us to invest in treats and toys for the long run because happiness is priceless. As a border collie, I believe in long-term investing. It's like playing fetch, but with compound interest. Stick around and you'll see your returns fetch some impressive gains. If Pfizer were run by border collies, we'd invent Healthy Paws, a line of supplements to keep our fellow canines in tip-top shape for a long, happy life. If Facebook were controlled by border collies, we'd have Pawbook, a social media platform for dogs to share their favorite toys, play dates, and squirrel-chasing adventures. If the S&P 500 were managed by dogs, we'd focus on companies that make the best squeaky toys. Military companies are often the subject of controversy and protests, so if you invest in them, get ready for some heated debates with your friends and family. When there's a market crash, it feels like someone just hid all our favorite toys, but don't worry, they'll turn up again. 
Apple's innovation is like a border collie's intelligence, always one step ahead in finding new ways to impress. Who knows, maybe someday they'll invent a smart collar that can translate barks into human language.